Welcome back, everybody, to the Internet's Talk Show. It's episode three of Watch Hollywood Dot da TV. Dot TV. That's where you go. That's like, yeah. I'm Frank Moran here, right here, doc, joined by Dr. Norbert Kraft, and then as well, introducing your Dr. James Cass here, who is also working on the Mars One expedition with Dr. Kraft. So, Dr. Cass, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, as we were setting this all up here together, uh, Dr. Kraft brought up that this is what it's going to be like. For everybody on Mars kind of contacting Earth, this is what it's going to be like trying to communicate like this. Well, it's going to be a lot worse, actually, because <laughs> there will be at least a 40-minute delay sometimes when you're talking with somebody and trying to get back to them. <laughs> so now I asked Dr. Kraft about his first involvement with uh, what kind of sparked his interest about space exploration and the working with, on the space mission. For you, I understand it was seeing uh, the first landing on the moon, Neil Armstrong stepping out there. Was that really just sparked your imagination? Well, actually, my imagination was sparked much earlier when uh, uh, Yuri Gagarin went up into space. Uh, back in 1961, I was a school student, pupil, and we were all debating, did he really go up there or did the Soviets just uh, simulate it and claim that he was up there? And we weren't very sure. <laughs> and then uh, afterwards, a few weeks later, the Americans got up there and uh, then then John Glenn a bit later with a proper orbit. So that was the time we were. I was very excited about space flight, and I was uh, just uh, 15, 16 years old. And in those days, it excited me so much. I took every book out of the library and read it from cover to cover, whether I understood it or not, about rockets, stars, but there wasn't very much about human space flight. <laughs> So uh, how was it that when you see Neil Armstrong step foot on the moon for the first time? Where were you? Right, that, was, that was quite something. Uh, and it was uh, particularly fantastic when you consider it was only eight short years from the first announcement that they would land on the moon. And they had uh, almost no rockets. They had not even uh, done anything with human space flight. And they had just begun to send their first satellites into space. So in eight or nine years, they achieved a uh, fantastic uh, technological uh, um, uh, uh, fantasy, and I was there glued to the television and watching that first step as the big statements were made. Yes, it was extremely exciting. Now, I guess when you think about it, as well, Dr. Kraft, is why you, when you think about technology the way it advances, if you think just about the computer, how far, how far it's come in just the time that it's been conceived, it's gotten smaller, it's been, you know, now it's in your hand, we have you know, phones that can just search everything. But if you think about space, space exploration, you see eight years they really made that big advancement there. But since then, in the 40 plus years since then, I feel like space exploration and the discoveries have kind of slowed down as opposed to while everything else is kind of technologically advanced up. Why do you think that is? Yes. This is, this is a theme in a recent uh, Space Days here in um, Nordvike, which is in, in The Hague, which is not far from the European Space Agency Technology Center. We were discussing this very question about these long delays today. Of course, you must remember in those days there was a race between Americans and Soviets. Which system is better, capitalism or communism? Uh, which was both uh, the reasons for the race was rather rubbish. But the fact that the race was there was uh, probably a good thing. And uh, the Americans put in about 4% of their GDP into the space project, and there was great motivation. Uh, there was excitement everywhere uh, that they wanted to move forwards and move forwards quickly. And uh, with that great motivation, they were able to do it. And nowadays, the bureaucracy has increased drastically. All the measures to make everything super safe has increased drastically. Uh, the uh, number of people in between. When I first uh, ran, did my first space lab mission in 1983, as a scientist, I was communicating directly with space lab in space on the space shuttle, talking with the crew several hours. In my last mission, the uh, STS-107 in 2003, we weren't allowed to talk with the crew. Somebody from Boeing had to do it for us. They were supposed to know better what we what we wanted. It, 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 it was the whole situation had changed. It was there was a whole massive bureaucracy that had gotten into place, and very little 
funds, they have to be distributed everywhere, all the big companies and all the wonderful frame contracts and the hundreds of administrators and other people in between, uh, things changed a lot. And I can assure you, we all became very discouraged. You know, space, the Columbus module, from the first inception of the idea, and I was involved in it back in 1990, until it got launched, was in the uh, just a few years ago. It took something like uh, uh, 20, uh, almost 20 years or 18 years, 20 years to uh, get into space, and some people will even say 28 years from the first inception. And that's just for a canister. So this is a totally ridiculous situation. So the agencies have in many ways failed. And this is where we hope that some of these private ventures might uh, get the momentum going and actually maybe have some uh, successes.